be camping somewhere. So I want to talk about um, working online, working remote, working from home, actually working together anywhere um, is what this is all about. You're here because you're interested in some of the new collaborative ways that people are working. Um, and I've got some fun things to show you. And I'll say in the past, right, remote communication has been really bad. This is this, who here still uses a spider phone in their office? Probably using it proudly. Oh my, I'm joking. Okay, I'm joking. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> this is the old, hey Bob, it's Lisette, can you hear me? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully those days will be over soon because there's way better technology out there. And I'd like to say, let's be honest, some things are still bad. This is Skype for Business. I am on a, I am on a uh, tour to put them out of business somehow. This is absolutely the worst video conferencing tool out there. I don't, does anybody like it no. or admit to it? You like it? Okay, that's, you're the first. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> but uh, so I usually do a poll in all my presentations, and 80%, it's the same, every company I go to, 80% actively hate it not just dislike it, but actively hate it. So you're one of the rare few birds out there. But respect, because uh, it still works, it still works, but there are many, many tools out there, so I want to show you some of those. Because a lot has happened in the last five years. And I mean, actually, you know, with the Agile Manifesto, that was 2001, I'm assuming a lot of people are software developers. A lot has happened since 2001, right? Like, that was the year that uh, the iPod came out, yeah. so, and uh, Windows XP that came out. Wikipedia was started in 2001, so, a lot has happened in the last, let's say, more than five years, but especially the last five years. And I want to show you some of that technology. One of my favorite tools for working together from anywhere is called Sococo. And this is a virtual office. So what you're doing is you're looking in, and I'm sorry about this part. Um, you're looking down into the floor plan of an office. Each one of these squares is an individual office. And each one of these dots is a person that's in that office. Now you can only see and hear the people that are in the same office with you. So the four of us here showing off our cats, we're down here in the lounge area. Everybody else can see that we're here, but they can't hear us or see what we're sharing or talking about. You can just double click to go to the office to join us. But So this is basically, you can see where everybody is on the virtual floor plan and it gives you a sense of presence. Um, in your office. So great tool. I run a virtual co-working group. If anybody's interested in joining, it's free. Just let me know. Um, and I can add you to it. It's people from all over the world just hanging out together and working and sometimes talking. So when we say you can't accidentally bump into people online, actually you can now. You can now meet by the virtual water cooler um, and talk. Another thing that I really love is telepresence. So this is give you an example. I brought my telepresence robot. So this is just a small little robot and you beam in just like on Skype or any other video conferencing tool, but it allows, it gives you the ability to move yourself from side to side. So now I can be sitting with my team at the table and move myself to see who's talking. I can nod my head yes, I can say no, and it's this kind of thing that just gives people a little more presence in the room. It humanizes that remote person instead. So, I mean, this stuff's good. So now this guy here, he put his Kubi, this is called a Kubi, he put his Kubi in his office and he was working from home because his kids were sick. So you can see people can still come into his office as if he's there, but he's actually <laughs> So you can now be in two places at once, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, holograms are coming soon, and I'm not kidding, Frank Zappa, they're actually doing a tour with Frank Zappa as a hologram with a real life band on tour. It's like, yeah. that's pretty cool. There's even a version uh, that can move, so it can move to the office. Uh, you mean the drivable version? Yes. That's yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the next level up. So the drivable version, this is the Beam Pro, made by Suitable Technologies. Um, and they used to be really expensive. They're now about 2,000 US dollars. So, for, uh, so they're actually getting better. Now the only thing you can't do is you can't do elevators, and you can't do stairs or swimming pools. Um, and if you're wondering how to say hello to people, you can't shake hands, of course. Instead, when we're in a robot, we fist bump. That's a much more 2D version of saying hello. But the point of this is, is that, is that my technology is not working out with the bit of this hand. Oh, everything's stalled. Oh, that's going to be a problem. The point is, so technology rocks, and it doesn't rock at the same time, obviously. Um, but the point of this is, is a lot has happened, and we need to move beyond just Skype for business and talking into these silly, um, 
the conference speaker phones in the middle of the desks. Like that, those are going to be things of the past in the next year or so. I mean, I know we're all still struggling with conference calls. Oh man, major failure. I think that is an Apple AirPlay problem. Give us one second to fix this. One second, guys. Technical difficulties again. Check the Microsoft program that you're running in the background. Exactly. It was on and now it's off. Let's try. Did you check the airplane yeah. itself? trying to do with all of these different technologies is we're trying to get to the Star Trek era so I'm a whole huge Star Trek fan but what we want right is instead of speaking over the old conference uh, phone the uh, I can't remember what it's called now anyway, the what is it polycom. the polycom yeah instead of speaking over the polycom we want to be like Star Trek right we're like Picard to Riker and from anywhere on the ship Riker responds and that is kind of what we're going for in a remote environment we want to do push to talk as much as possible and that is possible with tools like Sococo, with things like telepresence robots, with holograms that are coming. Those kind of things are possible. Oops. One slide in between. One of the quotes from one of the interviews I did with was Agile Bill Krebs from actually, I think he's also from North yeah, Carolina. He's, a buddy. he's what? He's a buddy. Oh, yeah, he's an amazing guy. But what he says is, People think they want to be co-located, but what we really want is high bandwidth communication. We want to be able to just talk to each other as if we're sitting side by side. So the next level up is, of course, virtual worlds, but that's still, I think, considering that we're still struggling with Skype for business, virtual worlds are a few more years away, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it today. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to dive into online meetings because that's generally where the problems lie. That's sort of how we talk and communicate as remote teams. And mostly, right, they're totally hell, right? They're like another layer of Dante's hell, right? Every day we've spent so much time on tech problems like we're doing today, even though we had dress rehearsals and all kinds of things, all kinds of things go wrong. But they don't have to be so bad. And then when you're with the remote team, you can get things set up well so that it can be like the Star Trek experience. So what I'd like to do is we're going to break out into groups of about five. So organize yourself. And for the remote participants, I'm going to use Zoom to do breakout rooms with you guys. So with Zoom, I can send them into their own breakout rooms of groups of five so that they can participate in this exercise as well. And then we're going to come together. So you have five minutes to make a list of all the things you dislike most about online meetings. Should not be that hard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of things to hate. So each team, you can use the uh, the paper boards here if you want. Is that okay, Stefan? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, so sure. use pick out a board, just make a list. So each team, and for the remote people, use whatever. Pick one person on your team to uh, get a list started, and just one person will make the list for the team. So I'll break you out into groups. Five minutes. So the very basics. Okay, one is 
Uh, a great, you need to have a great internet connection. <laughs> if you don't have good internet, you're doomed. That's sort of the basic of it. Uh, so if you don't have good internet, um, you're, you're doomed. So that, that's the thing. If you need to pay more, if your company needs to pay more, it's a surprising problem in uh, more places than I, can, than I can tell you. Germany, for example, has bad internet in a lot of places, yes. which is surprising. I mean, Argentina, I kind of expected, but like Germany. Uh, Sweden is amazing with internet, so you know, we just need to, to, to take that into account. The next thing is minimizing the background noise, of course. So we close the door, even though it's hot, but like people walking back and forth, killer. Or if you're working in a coffee shop or calling in from a car, kills the remote conversation. So put yourself on mute or minimize the background noise as much as possible. Using great equipment, take the polycom thing off and chuck it in the river. Um, the Jabra is great. As you can see, you guys can hear pretty well. They can hear, um, when, we're, when I'm talking, they can hear me pretty well. Somebody in the back of the room is a little bit less uh, well, but it certainly beats having to stand over the, the spider phone, is what they're called. Logitech also makes some really fantastic equipment for this. So it's not easy, it's not hard to find, we just have to actually invest in it as a company. If we have remote colleagues, this is where your investment, internet and great equipment. The next is using video. We discussed that during Jack's talk. You lose so much context without video. And what's really strange is people really don't like turning their videos on. You can already see that like half of the remote participants of this don't like turning their cameras on. It feels too personal somehow. And I'm here to say if you're working on a remote team, get over it. Turn your cameras on, put on a nice shirt, keep your pajama bottoms on, nobody can see that. Put on a t-shirt, you'll be fine. But turn the cameras on because it really helps to humanize the person behind the screen. It's really important. You can tell when they're tired or not looking. Yeah? Um, at the same time, video can be the biggest accelerator if you turn it off to get a more stable connection. Indeed. So if you're using Skype for business, that is for sure true. <laughs> <laughs> Even everything else, oh, uh, you can really or WebEx. Rescue, yeah. rescue the connection. Indeed, indeed, and which is why internet is so important. Absolutely. If you're using something like Zoom, uh, you'll probably have a different experience because of the technology behind it, the way it's built. I won't go too far into it. You've used it with it? Okay. So then they really, you really need to invest in an internet. I have a lot of people sitting in Germany, so I try to have a very, very stable <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are sort of the must-haves, though. If you're working with remote colleagues and you want to be productive, these are the must-haves. So the less of these that you have, the less productive it's going to be. It's sort of the bottom. Um, if, you're, if you're using video, you need to have decent lighting. We've seen there's somebody on the call who's sitting in front of the window. They've got that witness protection program thing going on. <laughs> you can't see them at all and they're blacked out. It also diminishes the engagement. And yes, it's just a little bit, but we're getting, we want to get to Star Trek. So every little bit counts. So having good lighting is really good. Um, and it's easy to do. For example, chat light, there are these clip-on lights and I forgot to bring mine. Um, there's clip-on lights that you can just clip on to the back of your laptop and in a pinch if you're in a hotel room or something you don't have you're not at home in your usual space you can have good lighting just in an instant it's like twenty dollars nothing and background people don't often think about what's in the background but if you're working in an open office you have people going back and forth all the time it's very distracting for others on the call now this poor guy I took a picture of him on a webinar I was on um, this poor guy, he has like a turquoise water bed in the background, and I covered up a bunch of the lotions and what, I don't know what it was, but it was embarrassing. I think. And here he is giving a webinar, you know, this is a, not a professional background. So I know that people think it doesn't matter, but it actually does if you're working online together. I had a really small apartment for a long time, up until uh, Monday or Tuesday actually, and I just bought a room divider because the bed was right behind my, my desk. So really simple, even in an open office, this can be something that's really easy, just set up a room divider behind you. Sounds a bit silly, but all these things make a little bit of difference. And then what I'd like to show off, and I'll do that as soon as uh, I have a little less technology, is this camera called Personify. And if you're giving online trainings, I'm sorry for the remote people that are watching my stomach at the moment, um, this is a camera that sits on the back of your laptop, and what it does is it projects me on the screen, and I'll show it for just a second. So, Pretend that I'm her and this is my screen. Basically, Personify projects me on the screen in front of whatever is on there so I can ban a white uh, during any online presentations. I think video is so important that I use it for everything. So a webinar, a training, anything that you do. And I have to say that my sales went up dramatically after I started using Personify because people can see you. You're not just a voice in slides anymore. It's really important. 
So there's all kinds of technology and tips that are happening. Okay, I'm gonna say we're gonna, because we're running out of time, we're gonna skip the icebreaker, we're gonna move straight into bingo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of paper. Everything okay? Yeah, Okay. Okay. So we're gonna take a piece of paper. I don't know if everybody has played bingo, but in America we have this bingo game and they call out numbers. And if you get like one whole row, you can scream out bingo. But what we're gonna do is create these papers and in each square, you're gonna put a solution to how you would make an online meeting better. So each square is a solution for how to make online meetings better. And then what we're gonna do is compare your answers with mine and the team that gets the most similar answers to what I have <laughs> is the winner. Now everybody is gonna walk away with a prize. So I brought something for everybody, but you're just winner in spirit and you know, uh, fame. You get total fame from that. So everybody make this card. So for the remote participants that are here, oops, this camera, sorry. For remote participants, um, you're gonna just need to make a list. Don't use the chat because you won't be able to see it when you come back as we learn, but go ahead and make your list of all the things that would make online meetings better and we'll compare it to my list. And in the interest of time, it's going to be five minutes, so really short. Five minutes. That's how it is with deadlines and software and stuff like that, right? Is it, is it five times three? Squares? Actually, you can make as many squares as you want. The more okay. answers you have, the better chance you have of fame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to send you guys to your breakout rooms again, and you guys, and then we have five minutes to make your list. Okay, so for the remote Whoa. participants, I'll also keep track of how many in your group you've gotten. Um, for you guys, keep track as we go through this. So let's start. Okay. So the first thing about having great meetings. I see a lot of yes. Having an organizer or facilitator. This does not mean the person is in charge. This means that the person is in charge of making sure the agenda happens as uh, planned and that you've organized the meeting. Everybody has the stuff. So an organizer or facilitator. Next. For online meetings, if you ask a question into the group, you either get everybody talking at once or you get crickets, right? So always select somebody online to answer the question. Now, it should also be okay for that person to pass. Like if somebody asks me something, I'm like kind of a deer in the headlights in the beginning, and it's okay to say, I'm not ready yet, pass it to the next person. But always remember to select somebody. Ah, there's a great meeting organizing software called Lucid Meetings. I don't work for them. I get no money from any of the tools I show up. Um, but uh, if you're looking for meeting organizing software, this is really good. This is a good one. Lucid Meetings and great people too. So, so in person, when we get into a meeting, you can slide in at the last minute, sit down, and be fully present. But in an online meeting, there's always tech problems, right? Always. Something's not going to work. So arrive early and test your equipment. Every video call I have, I test my sound and shoot. Okay. So one of the benefits, okay, we gotta, so it has to be more quiet for the remote participants. Folks. No, we had to be discussed before. Okay. One of the things that happens when you arrive earlier with some of the teams that I've interviewed have done is it becomes your personal time. Well, often in remote meetings, we come in, we go through the agenda, and we leave, and there's no time for like, hey, how was your weekend, and what's going on? How many cats do you have? So if you arrive early, like five, ten minutes early, a lot of teams have built in, like, that's your personal time to chit-chat about the weekend. So using that arriving early time, test your equipment, and also do some personal building. Yeah? Can I just mention that... Because I also have a lot of meetings with Germanic culture and Anglo-Americans, that this chit-chat <laughs> can be very important for the ones and can be a pain in the ass for the others. Right. So it's yeah. really culture dependent. Indeed. And so for those people who don't like it or don't appreciate the personal time, you then you show up one minute before the meeting starts to test your equipment. And the others can show up five or ten minutes before the meeting starts. But yeah, very... With cultural differences, let me address that really quick because it comes up all the time. What I recommend teams do is create a team agreement for how you're going to behave and how you're going to work with them. Just outline the information you're going to share, how you're going to communicate, and how you're going to know what other people are working on. I have a whole, on the, if you go to collaborationsuperpowers.com, there's huge amounts of resources for how to do that. But that takes care of a lot of cultural issues. Okay, next. Have a backup plan. 
<laughs> so when Skype for Business goes down, then what? Have a backup plan. Then you use GoToMeeting or Zoom or Appearin or any of the other things. Um, if I, you know, I have a backup headset, have a backup webcam. I mean, if you're really seriously re working remotely, have backup equipment. Ah, defining etiquette, speaking of team agreements. Define your meeting mm -hmm. etiquette. So, is everybody gonna be on mute? Are you gonna raise your hand to speak? Uh, are you going to talk through the chat? How are you gonna communicate with each other? So define your etiquettes before the meeting starts, or just on your team in general. Um, this is uh, Bayal Buman, he's the head of EMEA for Evernote, and then his interview goes really deeply into that, really good interview. Ah, one of my favorite. This is a great one for in-person or online meetings, and this is a technique called ELMO. In every meeting, there's always that one person that goes on and on and on, and you can't interrupt them, and it's even worse in online meetings. So I've created ELMO cards. Everybody will get an ELMO card at this. So this stands for enough, let's move on. And it's a way to not verbally interrupt, but visually interrupt, because often they can't take the visual cues, so you have to actually be obvious about it. It feels rude at first, some cultures don't like it, but if your team, it's part of your etiquette, teams get used to it. So, Elmo. Oh, Elmo. Yeah. They're seeing the screen now. In mixed meetings such as this, if two people were to start talking at once, then favor the remote person. So hopefully you all got that because I gave the hint at the beginning of the, the meeting. Ah, all the pings and dings and the, uh, you know, the, your phone going off and somebody ate something for breakfast on Facebook, turn those off during the meetings. Because again, we want Star Trek communication, right? Picard to Riker, ding, 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 this person has joined your meeting. Turn all, turn all of those things off, we don't need that anymore. Muting yourselves, like for instance with our remote participants, we have 40, no, 38 remote participants today and they have muted themselves because we heard before otherwise it's total chaos. So it does interrupt the flow a bit. If you're in a smaller group, you don't need to do it, but in a bigger group, definitely everybody needs to mute themselves when they're not speaking. And of course, Jurgen is the one unmuted because that's, that's how it has to be, right? He's gotta be the center, the center of attention. Okay, every meeting I start with an icebreaker question, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, this, what we're showing here, is take a picture of your shoes and show us what you're wearing. That says a surprising amount about your location and where, how you work. Uh, so you can see somebody's in slippers and somebody's are bare feet, and you know, so we've got, this was one of our Christmas parties. Uh, but the reason for an icebreaker question is one, if you get everybody to speak in the beginning of the meeting, Science shows that they're more likely to speak again. So that icebreaker question of your favorite color, favorite vacation spot, favorite drink, favorite food, it gets people speaking and they will speak up again or they're more likely to speak up again. The added side benefit of that is you start to get to learn a little bit more about your team. You know, it's not just Bob from engineering, it's Bob from engineering who loves the smell of rain, who is a baseball coach on the weekends and loves Ferraris, and so you slowly, over the course of meeting, get a bigger picture, a more well-rounded picture about who Bob is. If you're looking for ideas for virtual icebreakers, this is a great, it looks like a total 1980s website, but it is a really good program called virtualicebreakers.com. It's a little bit longer for team building exercises, but uh, it's a funny looking site. Using a buddy system. So if there are remote people, like Bisra is our buddy for the remote participants. She's in charge of the chat so that I don't have to worry about like, oh my God, somebody's on chat. If there's a remote problem, like they can't see me, I've shown the wrong screen, I unplugged the microphone, she's here to take care of that. So that's the buddy system for your remote participants. And then having a back channel, having the chat so that the remote participants can actually talk amongst themselves. Physical breaks, like the one that we had. If you're like in a room like this, we're all getting tired, but it's manageable. For the remote participants, it is really torture to be staring at that screen for so long. So kudos to you all for sticking around for this long. We're almost done. So physical breaks, oh, the picture you're seeing, this is a virtual dance party. So Jen here was, who was, no, it was Anya who was DJing, and the rest of us were actually dancing. And we do this every once in a while. If we have a really long meeting, we just take a two minute virtual dance break, somebody DJs and you just, Close the curtains so that your neighbors aren't looking, and then boogie <laughs> down. 
with certain culture. Right, it depends on the, everything's cultural dependent and team dependent. Sometimes it's way too soon. I mean, we're company yeah. dependent. Yes, there are, yeah, certain companies I would never do that at. But you know, it's just an idea of how you can get creative and how far people are going. So a virtual parking lot, this is for any meeting. There are things that come up on the agenda that were not on the agenda. There's things that come up in the meeting that were not on the agenda, and you need a time and a place to talk about that. So this is a Trello board, super easy, but it's just a parking lot for, hey, I acknowledge that that's important. It's not on the agenda. We're going to take five minutes at the end of the meeting to get to that. So in person or remote, but for remote, these things are critical. And then if some people are not speaking, so if you notice that the engagement's going down in the meeting, then you go around the virtual table with another icebreaker question, which can be, in one word, how are you feeling right now? Or thumbs up or thumbs down. There's a new game that just got released by somebody in the Happy Melly community, so I put it in the slides. It's called meetingspicer.com. It's a way to spice up your meeting. So there's all kinds of things. So today when somebody speaks, they hold a marker and they may be encouraged to draw. So if you're in a remote meeting, you know, you could use a virtual whiteboard. Those are really easy. Or virtual sticky notes. Or ask participants to express their personal energy on a scale of one to four. That could be an icebreaker that goes around. So it's another virtual icebreaker type of thing. And then keep presentations short, especially in online meetings. I mean, every webinar, who, is, who, who has sat through a webinar without multitasking? Exactly, right? So keep presentations short because online, if, especially if they can't, if you're not using Personify, it's boring. So 10 minutes should be the max until you have some sort of discussion again. And using visual cues. When you're using video, you can do all kinds of visual cues. Like, for instance, one of my favorites is you're on mute, right? Somebody starts, that's the most common one. Or uh, shall we record this meeting? So you can, and these are all kind of the cards that I've developed uh, for online meetings, or I can't hear you. So stick, you don't have to get super fancy cards. You can also use sticky notes, for example. But visual cues are really uh, an advantage in online meetings. And one of the last tips is record your meetings for those people that can't attend or for people who are in other time zones. And I know that attending online meetings, we already know it's a form of hell, and watching a recording of an online meeting seems like another layer of Dante's hell even further <laughs> up. But it is actually surprisingly good for those who can't make it. They can see the conversation. They can understand what happened. So you have an advantage with online meetings sometimes over in-person meetings. Excuse me. Is it going to prevent people from talking because they're scared that may be used, I don't know, against them later, or I don't know? Uh, I would put that in your team agreement. Uh, yeah, so I have not experienced that. Yeah. I have not experienced that, but it could, yes, it could happen. And so it just depends on your culture. Sure. Not all of these tips are going to fit every team. You have to sort of take what's going to work for your team and implement that. But. Yeah, it could happen, but it is really handy for people in other time zones. I would say it's the other way around. Knowing that it's recorded will make you behave as if it is recorded, and that's what you should do all the time anyway. Hmm. Oh, people oh, no. forget after a certain time. I have a question. <laughs> is it, just because I've never listened to any recording of any of the meetings that are happening, so I just want do you do that? Yes. Okay. Another solution, if you don't want to watch the whole recording, one of the teams that I interviewed, they do a summary at the end of every meeting. And so the last five minutes is just a summary of what they talked about. So if you don't want to watch it, you can just watch the summary. Uh, the question, is it legal when, a, in particular, it's happening between people that they are not working for the same company? Yeah, that's a, that depends on your company. I think if you ask and they give their agreement, it should be fine. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a question from a remote person. Yes, here's a video for the re recording point from Dirk and Francie asked, um, which tool for recording Skype meetings could you recommend? I would say for Skype, that's tough. There's all kinds of things, but like Camtasia is a screen capturing program. Camtasia would work really well. And if you just Google how to record Skype meetings, there's a number of tools that you can use for that. Yeah. Zoom is really easy, you just push record. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Skype for business. <laughs> okay.
I know that a lot of people I see things that are on your list that are not on mine and normally I'd like to go through that but it's already getting late and it's hot and it's uh, you know, we've been through a lot today so go ahead and add up your results for the remote teams out of your results also <laughs> and then I'll end with some tips Six, have 27. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's get the remote people back. Okay, so Bussera, you're going to please, for the remote teams, go ahead and put in the chat, for whoever was keeping track, go ahead and put in the chat how many, uh, how many things you got on your bad meeting bingo, how many things were similar, and then we'll go through the teams. And we'll start with the remote teams, because that's actually... Okay, so for the team with Dana, David, Franzi, Monica, and Lucas, what'd you guys get? I should pick somebody, right? Uh, Dana, how many did you guys get? Uh, I think I counted like four. Okay, great. But like anyone else, please correct me. I um. Well, it's fall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's late. It's fall. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so for the rest of the teams, put it in the chat, and Bissler will read it out. Otherwise, it's going to go too late. Okay, for you guys, how many did you get? Um, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Yes. Seven. Okay. I would go for seven. Five. five. Okay. <laughs> Four important ones. Okay. <laughs> Four best ones, right? Seven. Seven. <laughs> Three, seven. <laughs> okay. Back here, oh, you were in four. Okay. What we've got from the remote team? We have Dana four, Michelle four, Rebecca at least six. What does that at, yeah, at right. least mean? Like six? We or, can see some or seven. Or seven. <laughs> so, yeah. We're still discussing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's zero. I know. <laughs> so while we're still discussing, so what I've got for everybody is I printed out the eight most popular, I call them super cards, they're the virtual team meeting cards. So you will all have an Elmo card, you all have a you're on mute card and I can't hear you card. So you can cut these out and use them and show your remote teams your remote prowess after you go to the office tomorrow so everybody can have one of these. Oh, nice. For the remote people, we'll type in the link. You can go to collaborationsuperpowers.com slash gift and you'll be able to see yours there. So you can download your own copy. So everybody gets to walk away with one of these. And then you can Elmo people everywhere. It'll be great. <laughs> okay, and so let's end with just some final tips. One, two. And then... There's more pizza. Yeah, collaborationsuperpowers.com slash gift, and you can download yours there. And there's also a whole list of all the things we went through today, 36 great tips for online meeting facilitation and some other resources there. Okay, so top tips. One is, for companies that are hesitating going remote, I always say, Try, try the process of going remote because the, the more remote first you are, the more you're able to work remote in case of something happens like bad weather or transportation strikes or bad commutes or sick kids, your company will be better for it. So whatever you do, try it, even if you decide not to do it, and learn from the process of it. Um, the presentation. Oh. Oh. Okay. No, I just forgot to share the screen. Okay, sorry guys. I just moved into a new house on Tuesday and then on Wednesday morning drove to Switzerland, so I was like, whoa, a bit uh, out of sorts. Okay, use good equipment to communicate with each other. Everybody other than you, you can throw Skype for business. And, uh, and uh, the old spider phone, throw it, don't throw it into a river. Like It was just a good picture, but throw it out and get good equipment. Get a nice headset. You know, get some Logitech equipment, use Zoom or any other tool besides Skype for Business. Turn your webcams on, if possible, wherever you have the bandwidth. Turn the videos on, that's really important. And train your teams. So, as, as much as this looks like a shameless plug for my, my workshop, there's plenty of workshops out there. 
still, if you're going to work remotely and the people that you're working with don't know how to do it or are having trouble doing it, giving them one-on-one -on -one support and some training will go a long way. So you don't have to do formal training, but actually sitting down and helping each other do it will go a long way. We're actually at seven now, just to mention. Ah, so, so we have a three-way seven tie. Oh, there's so much fame in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and counting, yeah. And what? And counting. And counting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you come up with more. Um, and if you want to know lots more information, I just released my book a couple of months ago called Work Together Anywhere. It's 400 pages packed with all the tips. I did over 100 interviews with remote companies. Um, and I just put all the tips into the book. The print version will be out in a month, but the ebook is already available. So um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and money went into that book. So I hope that it's valuable for people. And that's it. So I hope you got something out of it.